after work uh, I don't over drink but her dad used to um, so you know we uh, oh, we we do tend to go into tend to go into fearful states based on experience um, right I I don't like it that my husband has uh, beers at night because I know that when I drink uh, it's because I wasn't in a good place so you know fear kicks in um, right? So anger is a byproduct of fear, right? You say my wife gets mad. Anger is a byproduct emotion. It's a secondary emotion. It's never a primary emotion. Anger is a byproduct of hurt, fear, or frustration. So what is it? Is it hurt? Is it fear? Is it frustration? From what you're saying, it's fear. So she's having a fear reaction. Um, so the conversation you can have with her is how can I help you deal with your fear reaction? Uh, if it's literally, you know, two beers after work on Friday, you can say, why don't we go to AA meetings together? Because your dad used to over drink. And I want to support you through your fear that this is something that's gonna be a recurring thing in your life, a pattern in your life. So I'm, I'm here for you to help you work through this fear. You, can you offer yourself up for that? I want to divorce my husband, but I don't know what to do. So, um, um, you can come get a coaching session, my love. I literally coach people out of bad relationships on a regular basis. Uh, so depending on your situation, there is a plan that we can come up with that can help you. Uh, so depending on your situation, there is a plan that we can come up with and uh, help you through this process. That can help you through this process. I think I have to break up with my boyfriend. We've broken up before, but always end up back with him. How do I stick with my decision? Um, so it needs to be, it's, it's kind of like you're breaking a habit, right? You're breaking a habit when you break up with somebody. You break up with the daily habit of, break up with the daily habit of what your communication was. And that can be the hardest thing to break, is to break out of something familiar, to step into something, and break up with the daily habit of what your communication was. And that can be the hardest thing to break is to break out of something familiar to step into something unfamiliar. In your brain, break up with the daily habits when you step into unfamiliar territory. And your bro the way to break the habit of what this relationship was to you is the same way you're gonna break a habit if you're a cigarette smoker. People have the impulse to, to smoke the next cigarette. And the way that they stop, have to understand that it's a moment by moment decision to not go back to him. It's not a daily decision, it's not a weekly decision, it's a moment by moment decision. Every moment that you feel compelled to go back, you need to say to yourself, I'm gonna wait for this moment to pass and occupy yourself. What do you need to do? Make a list of things that are gonna be busy work for you, that you're gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna be more productive right now than going back to my ex. I'm gonna do one of these things on my list and get to work doing one of those things on your list. Is it normal to miss my boyfriend the second he leaves? Uh, it's not abnormal, but it shouldn't be getting in the way of you living, right? It's abnormal if you um, miss him and all you do is pine for him and wait for him to text you again. You do need to, um, you know, have life that's outside of your relationship. How do we bring up a point without making it sound like if you don't do this, I might leave? Uh, so here's how you say it. <clears throat> this is your script. I'm not telling you what to do. You're free to do what you want. I need to be in a relationship with somebody who, right? So for instance, liking, commenting, DMing other girls. 
I'm not telling you what to do. You're free to do what you want, but I need to be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't seek the attention. Hi, I love your content. Thank you. This has made huge changes in my relationship. Thank you. Uh, never get that tired of hearing that. What do I think of ultimatums? There's nothing wrong with ultimatums. Ultimatums are basically just a bad word for standards and boundaries, right? Uh, stop demonizing the word ultimatum and trying to make, you know, well, I don't like ultimatums. Well, who cares? You don't have to like it. This is my boundary. This is my standard. You can take it any way you want. You can give it any label you want, but I don't want to be in a relationship where this happens. If you choose to be the person who does this kind of thing, don't come back at me and say, I gave you an ultimatum. My love, I gave you a choice and I have a standard. So you can choose to be the person I need to be with or you can choose not to. It's not an ultimatum. You always have the choice. So do I. You compared it to smoking. Does that mean it's an addiction? We seek what's familiar even if it's wrong for us. We get used to things and then we are afraid of the unknown, fear of the unknown. So the reason why I use the addiction model is because when we are leaving the familiar for the unfamiliar, our brain releases a distress signal that says, wait a second, you might not survive in this new world because we still have throwbacks to our caveman days in our DNA, in our biological makeup, in our survival instincts, which we still have. So it's a moment that you need to let pass. Just like if you're trying to kick a habit, it's a moment that you need to let pass. Love the lip color, thank you. How do I tell the guy that his behavior has been tricking me for the past couple of weeks? Um, I don't know what the behavior is. So I don't know if that's something that you need to work on or that they need to change. My partner says cruel things only when angry that I can't forget. Is this normal? No, it's not. So, uh, you know, I don't know if you're with a selfish short-term thinker or a generous long-term thinker. If you don't know, grab no more assholes. There are 12 character traits in there you need to grade his paper on. If he doesn't get at least a nine out of 12, this is a selfish short-term thinker and you're better off leaving this relationship and getting into a relationship with a generous long-term thinker and then working on making that relationship functional. There's no point trying to create a functional relationship with a dysfunctional person. You're wasting your time and energy. But if he's a generous long-term thinker who simply needs to learn how to relationship better instead of needs to learn how to adult better, right? So, you know, listen, a, a selfish short-term thinker is not an adult in a relationship. So that's why, you know, it's like get rid of the person who can't adult properly and then find a person who does adult properly and then become functional adults together. But there's no point trying to have a functional adult relationship when one of the people are still childlike in their minds. So make sure you have a generous long-term thinker, remove the conflict from your relationship. These are symptoms of conflict. If you remove the conflict, you remove the symptom. So if you're with a generous long-term thinker, do grab fix that shit so that you fully understand how to remove conflict from your relationship. And I say, fully understand how to remove it. My husband and I haven't had a fight in four years. Where are my fix that shit readers? Where are my people in here who follow my advice? When is the last time you had a fight in your relationship? Hello, there you are. When was the last time, if you're following my advice, if you're using my advice, when's the last time you had a fight in your relationship? Is it a good idea to date someone who makes a little less than you and does equal housework? It, it's so less than you and does equal housework. There's nothing wrong with what makes you happy, right? There's nothing wrong with what makes you happy. So if the two of you come up with an arrangement, find, you know, financial burden and physical burden, right? Those are the two burdens in a household, financial burden and physical burden. If the two of you are okay with the arrangement that you make and you are happy, then it's fine. I will get that book for sure. Good, 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 love. Uh, I'll get that book. He is amazingly emotionally intelligent, but is rarely angry. 
This is going to be a good boost to your relationship, my love. Ooh, just bought it. Can't wait to start. How do I love myself more and put myself first after a breakup? If I feel lack in myself after break, my love, I made a book for you. It's called Come Back Queen. Come Back Queen. This is the book that helps you build yourself back up after breakup, helps you get over that breakup, helps you elevate yourself so that you are ready to get back out there and get an elevated relationship. Oh my God, I just had my Peter Pan ex who is 43 years old move out and we broke up. I'm 32, he's a man child. No man childs. hello love. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. Our break's okay. Uh, they, my husband and I broke up a few times. Just know that a break is a break up. Nobody has the right to say, I don't wanna be with you, but I don't want you to be with anybody else. How do I get over being anxious in a relationship? Uh, you can get fix that shit, do what's in that book. You can start meditating. There's a meditation resource button in the link tree in my bio. Uh, there's a no more insecurity program that I offer that helps you become a secure, confident person in your relationship if you have in fact chosen a generous long-term thinker who loves you. Okay, my I do's, I see you. Those of you who want a notification when I go live, I go live pretty much every day, but I'm loosey-goosey on the time. So you do want to get that notification. So click my picture up here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up, and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell when you do that. Say, I just did, because we like to know who joins the gang. Uh, an ex-boyfriend who remained friends broke some trust issues with me. How do I trust him again? Uh, why are you struggling? Why are you struggling to continue trusting somebody who breaks your trust? Uh, right? Have you asked yourself that? Why, why you would keep someone in your life that you have to um, keep accepting their behavior? We broke up. I'm not sure if it's a break. Should I ask or give him space? Uncertain where we stand. Um, you can clarify that if you want or you can empower yourself. So what do you want? What is it that you want? Don't, I, I hate these conversations where you, you go to them and you're, and you're saying, here is all the empowerment. You get to decide how this is going to play out. You get to decide where I stand. Instead of just going to them and saying, okay, control me, because that's basically what you're saying. Control my outcome, control my, control my life, control what I'm gonna think, how I'm gonna feel, what I'm gonna do. Think about what you want. Like you guys broke up for a reason. What went wrong in your relationship? What needs to be better going forward? What do you want in a relationship? Not in this relationship. What do you want in a relationship? Take all the lessons that you've learned from this relationship. The good, the bad, the ugly. Define your next relationship. And ask yourself, is this person what I'm looking for for my next relationship? And, and come to them empowered and say, you know, I've been doing some thinking and this is what I want. And I don't know if you feel ready to offer me this, but I want you to understand that this is what I'm holding out for now. This is what I insist on being with going forward. And if you ever feel you want to be the man by my side, you, you know, if, if you want, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what it is I'm looking for. Um, if you don't care to know what it is that I'm looking for, then I guess that's the end of the conversation. But instead of going to him and saying, tell me what's happening, you figure out what's happening. You understand what you want for yourself and empower yourself with that knowledge. Get no more assholes, by the way. If you need clarity about what a good relationship should be, no more assholes and fix that shit are key to understanding that. No more assholes is the definition the definition of the man you should be with. Fix that shit is the definition of how this relationship should be. Uh, are your books just based on female perspective? Well, I am a female. 
So it's hard for me to base it off a male perspective since that's an experience I've never had. The number one rule of writing is write what you know. I did write a dating book for men. So these books are either gender neutral, so for me to whoever the reader is, whether it's male, female, or, or, or binary, um, so me to whoever, my relationship books like No More Assholes, Face That Shit, Come Back Queen, this is woman to woman because I'm talking about relationships from a woman's perspective to a woman, how to navigate it better. But I did finally write a book for men, which is the perfect play. Who wants to see the cover? Who wants to see the cover for the perfect play? Who wants to see the cover for my dating book for men? So the dating book for men is all about helping men get into a relationship with a woman, with a generous long-term thinker, not a selfish short-term thinker. Thank you, my love. Dao. So this is the perfect play. It's actually blue. It looks green, but it's blue. So uh, that, if you want to grab that, is the first button in the link tree in my bio. So if you guys want to grab the perfect play, go to my bio, click on that link tree, and, uh, and uh, you'll see it's the first button. I got you, my mans. Fighting and arguing for any reason why nothing is consistent. I've read Fix That Shit. You read Fix That Shit. Have you applied Fix That Shit? Have you applied it consistently? Have you also applied the concept of, of doing it and releasing the outcome? Because the advice of Fix That Shit is not meant for a... Um, manipulation right you don't apply it to manipulate them you apply it because you're doing the functional things and if you outgrow them then you outgrow them so be it a book for a 60 year old women starting over would be no more assholes uh, so it doesn't help to just read fix that shit. Are you meditating? Are you being non-reactive? Are you taking responsibility for your emotions and your behaviors? Fix that shit has made my marriage so amazing. Forever grateful. I love hearing that. Love hearing that. Uh, love, 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 love. Is it possible to have so much conflict and stay together? Yeah, like attracts like, right? Like attracts like. If conflict makes you feel alive, right? And you're with a partner, conflict makes them feel alive. Then the two of you are like, yeah, we're perfect. We're a perfect fit. Oh, I hate the conflict, but I love doing it. Oh, I hate the conflict, but I love doing it. Oh, I hate the conflict, but I don't want to stop, right? This makes me feel alive. Gives me something to do. Gives me something that's juicy. What are some good gifts for men? My boyfriend deserves to be spoiled. Uh, so the best way to spoil them is the way that speaks uh, so much to their love language. So uh, do a love language quiz, right? Do the quiz, do it together, understand what their love language is, and then spoil them with their love language. Because I could say power tools, but the guy's a computer geek, right? So um, it's not the gift that matters, it's how much it speaks to them. I like your hair. Thank you. Should I stay friends with mutual friends of my ex narc? They know what he did and still hang out with him. Is there a benefit to this friendship? Are they a friend to you? Friend is a verb, by the way. Friend is a verb. Are they a good friend? If they're not a good friend, regardless of who else they associate with, I don't care who my friends talk to, what matters to me is how they treat me. There have been, like, I, I disassociated from somebody in our friend group a number of years ago. 
eventually my friends disassociated from them too because they saw what I saw but I you know like this this person was toxic towards me I disassociated from them I didn't tell anybody in my group that I did because that's between me and that person so I I, I don't impose my rules on other people there have been a few times where there have been people in our friend group that i want nothing to do with so that's between me and that person i'm not going to stop being friends with the other people who are friends with them because they have their own relationship i have my relationship with you i have my relationship with you i've cut off my relationship with you because of how you are with me I'm not cutting off my relationship with you because of how you are with me. So your friends should be chosen based on how you treat each other. Any tips for being broken up but living together? That actually makes things easier in, in a few ways. The expectations are taken off the table, right? And expectations are a word that really weighs down a relationship. So. Now that you don't expect them to behave a certain way towards you, you you relax, right? Like, you know what? I, I don't expect you to be loyal. I don't expect you to be honest anymore. We're not together anymore. So do you, boo? And, and it's just, it's so much more releasing to not have these expectations on someone's behavior. So focus on you, focus on your well-being, who cares about them and their behaviors and just peacefully coexist until you get your space. He's bad at communicating. How can we improve that? Any exercises? So it's actually a daily living choice that creates better communication in your partner. Don't think that I can give you a magic wand that you can wave over your partner that is going to release what holds back the communication. What makes a partner a better communicator is the feeling that there is emotional safety in the relationship. Uh, so what creates emotional safety? Consistency. Right? So choose acts that you consistently use in your relationship. Love is a verb. Love is what you do. So when I consistently apply loving acts in my relationship, regardless of what's going on, even if we had a disagreement, even if I don't like him that day, even if I'm feeling poopy, every single day I get at least two kisses in that are minimum five seconds each. Every single day I make my husband his meals. So these are, you know, his, his love language is physical affection and acts of service. So every single day, I consistently apply these behaviors. What this communicates is regardless of what's going on, the foundation is rock steady. Our relationship is okay. We might have exterior things going on, some, you know, disagreements about things, but the foundation stays solid. That creates emotional security. Another thing is when they come home, what is the greeting? Be consistent with the greeting so that their brains actually relax on the way home because with familiarity comes comfort. I'm familiar with the way I will be greeted. I always know what's going to happen when I get home. If, if you, Listen, if you're on your way home and you don't know what's going to happen when you step in the door, will it be a nice day? Or will it be a bad day, right? If you don't know, you get antsy, you get anxious on the way home. If you know it's always a nice day when I get home, you become happy about going home. You become relaxed on your way home. You might have had a shitty day, but on your way home, you are anticipating this nice greeting. And so your brain begins to relax. This is emotional security. So these are things that you can start doing in your relationship that cement emotional security. A partner who feels emotionally secure, communicates more, is more affectionate, is more open, and wants to spend more time with you. So these are things that you can start doing, but getting more of that communication, get into fix that shit, my love. This is the book that teaches you how to make communication safe in a relationship. It starts with emotional security and then you layer on more tactics on top of that. There's 50 chapters in this book that are going to teach you how to get better communication from your partner. Hello. <laughs>
oh, I'm interested in fix that shit. Would I still benefit if my husband is a short-term selfish thinker? So here's the thing. This book works with generous long-term thinkers who love you. You can try and see if it turns things around, but it's a lot easier when you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you. Uh, if we go on a break, as he says, he needs to work on himself in order to treat me better. Red flag. Yes. Um, by the way, a break is a breakup. Take the breakup. Take the breakup. Because there's, I see two red flags here. Treat me better. I see three. I see three, my love. One, that you put up with somebody who should be treating you better. Two, that he he recognizes he should treat you better. Three, He's not willing to work on the relationship. I have to leave this so I can make myself better. Let him go, take the breakup, get no more assholes. Do not end up with somebody who needs to learn how to treat you better again. Get in a relationship with somebody who treats you well. <laughs> Nikki dogs, my dog greets me when I come home. Best feeling in the world, yeah. When my husband comes to the door, this is what he hears. Hi, baby. And then I go greet him at the door. I got to take my turn because the dogs, they get their their loveys first. And then I get I get myself a kiss and a hug from him and make a salsa guacamole. And he knows. He comes home and it's, it's peace. It's love. It's affection. It's food, right? Every single time he comes home. So he's happy to be home. We are happy at home together. Is it okay to get back with my ex? You need to come get a coaching session because I need to assess your relationship. I need to assess who this person is. I don't know if it's a good idea because I don't know what's going on. Is it embarrassing that I've never been in a relationship before and I'm 21? No, it sounds like my husband. Not at all. Look what he ended up with. My ex needs time to heal from past traumas and would like to be with me in the future. Should I keep contact? I don't think you should. Um, I don't think this is something you should maintain. I don't think you should put yourself in limbo, hoping, right? Because this is what you're talking about. This is a hoping game. I hope they effectively deal with their past. I hope they effectively learn how to become better human beings and better partners and not vomit their past into their present, right? I hope once he's done all that, he's going to want to be with me still. This is so much hoping and this is you keeping yourself in limbo. This is you not moving forward. This is you not taking control over your own life. This is you not being plugged into reality, my love. The reality is you need to be open for somebody who's going to be the right partner for you not shutting that door keeping in contact with your past and hoping this person will become who you need them to be uh so no more assholes by the way is the ideal book for you to read so that you understand what you should be getting into uh so Talking about consistency of behavior and creating emotional safety in a relationship, somebody said, so basically expecting your partner to make your day better. So first of all, expectations are a big no-no in a relationship. They are a relationship killer. An expectation is a story you create inside your head. I don't know where you got the word expectation from in what I said, because I didn't talk about the other person's behavior. I talked about your behavior and how to create emotional security in your relationship by monitoring your own behaviors. I'm not expecting my husband to make my day better. I make my day better. I make my day better by being a consistent, good, thoughtful, mindful human being who is aware of her behaviors and the impact they have on others. I've been telling my friend about my relationship, but now they don't like him. Uh, oh, you've been telling them your relationship problems and they don't like him because he's not a good partner. So instead of not talking about your relationship problems anymore, how about fixing the relationship problems? Uh, I would suggest getting coaching. 
don't let a abusive partner isolate you, right? There's a reason why your friends don't like your partner and, and now you're thinking you should stop talking about the negative things that are going on in your relationship. That's called isolation. Don't be with an abusive person who isolates you. Yes, exactly. Expectations, no standards. Yes, you got it. Your TikToks make me feel confident enough to finally start my dating journey at age 25. Thank you. You're so welcome. Oh, I'm here for this goodness. I am here for this goodness. Here for this goodness. Uh, how do you avoid feeling defeated while dating, have a, having a hard time finding a partner? So it's, oh, just purchase mine. Amazing. Um, so it's all about how you're approaching it, right? Um, so if your mindset is uh, every time somebody says no, I am rejected, instead of saying to yourself, you know what, when somebody says no, it just means we're not a good match. So good, I'm glad they said no, because I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody that I'm not a good match with. Um, uh, if, um, if you tell yourself that, you know, oh, I hope the next one, oh, oh I hope the next one, oh, right? Instead of saying, this is a journey, this is a process, this is me really like working through all these lessons to find the ideal partner for myself. Approaching this more lightheartedly, right? Like I'm getting out there and I'm meeting people and eventually I'm gonna meet the person who's right for me. I really would suggest getting no more assholes to overcome this defeated mindset. Uh, because you know this is an emotional turmoil that does need to be overcome we do um, infect each other with our inner vibe right so if you're showing up thinking oh you know I'm just gonna be defeated again I'm just gonna be rejected again we don't need to talk in order to communicate with each other we all have had most of us here have had an experience where you think about somebody and a minute later you get a text message from them right which means we are communicating without words to each other so if you show up for a coffee a walk a date whatever and you're already afraid this isn't going to go well you're infecting them with that energy so you do need to monitor how you think how you feel how you approach um elevate your self-esteem elevate your confidence so i do suggest you grab no more assholes because i really do talk about the whole process of getting your mindset in order, calming your fears, calming your anxiety, elevating your confidence and self-esteem because confidence is the sexiest trait, number one sexiest trait, the number one sexiest trait. Like, listen, uh, my, my husband to me when I first met him, nice guy, uh, nice guy, um, you know, more attractive when he shaved his goatee, nice, more attractive when he got some newer clothes, nice. Um, but man, when I saw him walk, oh, first time I watched that man walk, I went, oh, damn, <laughs> like blew my mind because what I saw in the walk was confidence. It totally turned me on. Are your books on Audible? I do not have any books on Audible. I do have one audiobook that is fix that shit you can only get it through the link tree in my bio audible wants 70 percent, and i'm like mm -mm -mm. i don't think so it's a little too much so if you do want to get fix that shit in audiobook just go into the link tree in my bio you're going to find it there uh guys if you do want to grab any of my books you will find them on amazon or anywhere you buy books online if you want ebook or kindle um, Amazon is the best place to get my books because you will find all of them there. I have some books on Kobo. I have some books on Apple Books. I have all my books on Amazon. How do you communicate the no kissing rule in the beginning? So first of all, my love, you do need to grab no more assholes because uh, there is science behind this and you need to be able to have an intelligent conversation about this process. But you always have to uh, communicate it before they move in for a kiss. You don't want to reject them 
you want to communicate this is my goal committed in a long-term relationship this is my plan using a no kissing for three months dating role i give you the script and the science and the how all about the how in no more assholes i appreciate your perspective very informative thank you one more day until fix that shit and custom made arrive nikki dogs melissa thank you for following guys who wants a notification when i go live who wants to know when i go live say i do where can you find a kind woman i wrote a book for you my love i wrote a dating book for men um it's called the perfect play you will find the link to that in the link tree in my bio if you just if you just want it one click and you find it um or you can go on amazon and uh you can search under my name but the easiest way to find that book is through the link to my bio. I would love it. Okay, those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here once or twice, you're gonna get a pop-up. In the pop-up is a bell, click on the bell. When you do that, say, I just did. I just did. What do you think about relationships when you break up for a day and get back together? I don't have any thoughts on that. I tried dating a few times. They always wanted to move fast, but I have past trauma. Using the no kissing for three months dating rule is ideal for you. Zanarado, <clears throat> your picture looks like a male. I would highly suggest the perfect play for you because I do teach you how to take it slow. I teach you how to communicate that um, and, and I, I teach you how to go through that process. Also how to find a generous long-term thinker. Uh, so you don't get trapped in a relationship with a selfish short-term thinker. If you read your own books for audiobooks, I listen to them over and over. Love your voice. Guess what? Fix That Shit is an audiobook. I did narrate it. I narrate uh, my books. I am uh, doing No More Assholes right now. But yeah, Fix That Shit is in my voice. How do you gain confidence? Joined. Love it. Love it. Welcome, Kathy. I want to buy your audiobook, but I don't have Kindle. You don't need Kindle to buy my audiobook. Um, you can still buy and download. There is a sheet. When you get Fix That Shit an audiobook, I actually give you instructions on how to listen to it. So I give you app suggestions that you can download so that you can listen to the book, and I tell you how to load it up into your app as well. Yay, you're welcome. Uh, I struggle being by myself and always tell my time with others. Always fill my time with others. How do I find myself? So here's the thing. It's normal for you to struggle being by yourself. Um, it's, it's absolutely normal for that because you are actually designed to want to be in a tribe. You were designed to want to be in a relationship. You are a biological creature designed, coded, coded by mother nature to survive and procreate in order to ensure the survival of the species. So you don't need to fight against this desire to be with other people. It is natural because your biological body says there is strength in numbers, get your tribe, be with your tribe, stay with your tribe. It's okay to be with people. Don't demonize yourself because you want to be around people. That's okay. That's your design. That's the biological creature that you are. Why do you feel you should be alone? Why do you feel you have to be comfortable being alone? Is that because that's what we hear? Just because you hear it doesn't mean it's true. Doesn't mean it's true. You should be happier not being in a relationship that's toxic you should choose to not be in a relationship that's toxic and that's the foundation of what they're saying is you should be happier being single than wanting to be in a toxic relationship but you don't have to be alone it's not natural to be alone Ah, 
this, so I like this one. Might be a dumb question. It's not, by the way. Uh, how do you keep someone interested in the first three months without kissing? So here's the thing. Uh, kissing is sexual intimacy, right? Because kissing is an aphrodisiac. Uh, there are chemicals produced in a kiss that are aphrodisiacs, amphetamines, and antidepressants. So this is pretty much why once we start kissing, we want to get into other stuff because there's a chemical produced that drives us to want to do those behaviors. Um, so in a relationship, you can't always be kissing. You might get into an accident that puts you in a hospital bed for three months, right? There's something that might happen that incapacitates you so that you can't be a sexually active person. You need to find the person who finds you so interesting that sexual activity is a bonus part of the relationship. It's not what makes the relationship. So if you're not interesting enough to stick around for three months, then don't count on this person sticking around for three months if something happens to you. So this is one of the things that you find out when you use a no kissing for three months dating rule. The people who are just around because of what they can get from you physically are the ones who walk away. So I don't want you to worry that you're gonna lose somebody because you're not being sexually active with them. I want you to be okay with people walking away because you're not. Because who you're gonna end up with is a person that says, okay, I understand, I want a relationship too, and I find you interesting. Let's do this no kissing for three months journey. That's okay with me because you as a human being are more than just your body. You are more than just your physicality. I like your mind. I like your goals. I like your personality. Now, one thing to keep in mind, no kissing doesn't mean no affection, right? It doesn't mean no affection. So what is affection? Holding hands, cuddling. But affection is something that is earned because you feel warm and fuzzy. Uh, Enduro, I'm gonna open up. Enduro, come do a chat with me. I'm opening up my, my guest chat. Come talk to me about why you don't agree with that philosophy. So I will take you on live so we can have this discussion, Enduro, if you wanna come actually talk about this. Um, so if, no kissing doesn't mean no affection, but affection is something that you give because they are consistent with their behaviors, because they are consistently kind, they consistently show up, they are consistently thoughtful, they are consistently interesting to be with, they are consistently generous. So you like somebody because of, of who they are, right? So don't give affection. This is the thing about dating nowadays, is people are giving a, like sexual intimacy, which is a kiss, by the fourth date because of fear. If I don't kiss them by the fourth date, they're going to think that I'm not interested in them. They're going to think that you know we're we're not a good fit because we're not kissing yet. They're they're going to think that they should move on, right? I'm going to lose an opportunity. I'm going to lose an opportunity. So Fear is driving you to sexual intimacy. Don't let fear drive you to sexual intimacy. You want to get in a relationship with somebody, not because of fear, but because of compatibility, because the two of you click together, because the two of you are a good match, because you've had so many conversations and you understand you share the same goals and you share the same timelines. So that's who you need to be affectionate with, is somebody who you increasingly like over time. And person you kiss is the one you seal the deal on the knowledge that the two of you have the same goals and timelines and are compatible and work well together. That's who you want to kiss. How do you transition from a friends with benefits situation into a relationship? you have a conversation uh you say 
first of all, like you want a relationship, right? Which means you're ready for a relationship. So you need to be clear about that and you need to be okay with them not wanting a relationship. That's exactly why they're friends with benefits, by the way, because it's that that's that's what fits in their life. They didn't want a relationship, but just sex, that's cool. I'm good with that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna say, hey, uh, I just need to let you know that I'm done my playtime and I really wanna commit a long-term relationship because I wanna buy a house one day, get married one day, you know, have kids, like whatever your goals are, right? And then you say, what about you? And you let them tell you where they're at. Are they ready for a relationship or not? If they say, no, I'm not ready for a relationship, you need to drop the friends with benefits. You need to say, okay, then I need to move on from this because I'm now ready to go find a relationship. Men think we just wanna be friends. So here's the thing, you communicate. I like you, I wanna see where this goes, but I don't wanna kiss somebody I don't know because I'm looking for a committed long-term relationship. That's it. If they, it, listen, if they're too immature to understand those words, like does anybody here not understand those words? I like you, I wanna see where this goes, but I don't wanna kiss somebody I don't know because I'm looking for a committed long-term relationship. Who doesn't understand those words? Who's gonna be insulted by those words? Somebody who lacks maturity. And good, good. I weeded that one out. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, I don't have, honestly, so any advice or resources for queer women or people? Um, I follow some uh, lesbians on TikTok that, I, you know, I, I, I want to shift you towards the role models, right? So I think, I, honestly, TikTok lesbians uh, have been some really great role models. When should you start introducing each other to friends before you kiss? Make your friends part of the vetting process. Always make your, your people part of the vetting process. Introduce them to your people before you kiss them. If they don't want to meet your friends, if they don't want to meet your inner circle before you kiss them, don't kiss them. If you introduce them to your inner circle and they see red flags, don't kiss them. Make your people a part of your vetting process. And if you don't meet their inner circle, don't kiss them. Don't think that if you kiss and start a relationship, you will then become friends. Don't think that if you kiss and start a relationship, they will then include you in their life. If they can't show you that behavior before you kiss, don't count on it happening after you kiss. I have so many people who show up here who say, yeah, we've been dating for nine months and I haven't met his friends yet. I haven't met his family yet. I haven't been to his house yet. They're literally in a relationship with somebody who's not in a relationship with them. Is the three month rule only for people you just met? Yeah, it's like, I literally don't know you. You're literally a stranger. And by the fourth date, you're still a stranger because I don't know if what you say is the truth. I don't, I, I, I have, I don't have enough time yet to see if your behavior is consistent. No, you showed up for four dates, great. Are you still showing up at six weeks, right? And just, just because they showed up in the beginning, just because they're nice in the beginning, doesn't mean that will be consistent. You need three months of behavior as like, seriously guys, like you're picking somebody for the next 50 years. If you can't commit to observing their behavior for three months, in order to understand them better, to see if they're gonna be a good baby daddy, a good husband, then you're in for whatever variables are going to come up. You're welcome, love. This purse just fix that shit just now. How do I listen to it? There's, there's a printout, there's a sheet, there's a, a PDF, I believe. Uh, follow the instructions, you get instructions with, with that. So follow the instructions. <clears throat> uh, 
I get so anxious when my boyfriend goes out with his friends, even though I trust him. How can I fix this? So I have a No More Insecurity program. Uh, this is designed to deprogram the insecurity that is consuming your mind, your emotions, and the behaviors you feel compelled to do. Three months is very, very generous. Three months is the minimum. Three months is the minimum, um, right? Like it's, it's not too long, but it's not too short. I wish I found you before I started online dating. Her three month rule is golden. It really weeds out, really weeds out the guys that you just would not be happy in a relationship with. How did you come up being a dating coach in relationship? Um, people have been coming to me for relationship dating advice, life coaching advice ever, like for over 20 years. So it's something that I didn't go seek out. This is literally something that sought me out. Uh, three months later, only to find out she cares about dollars and inches. It, it wouldn't take you three months to figure that out. But um, I kind of have to block you on that one because uh that just sounds so toxic uh is it a bad idea to be exclusive with someone long distance i haven't met yet but planning to yes it is yeah you get the best advice and you're the best relationship coach thank you Uh, I'm in a toxic relationship and he's manipulated me so much into not being able to leave. Please help come get coaching. Uh, I cannot coach on a live, but it really does start with what you're telling yourself. You need to change the dialogue in your mind. So I do suggest you grab No More Assholes uh, and start reading that book and really get a better understanding of what it is that you need and deserve in a relationship. But number one rule is stop talking about your life as though you have no control. Um, you do have control, but you're not telling yourself you have control. So you stay in this loop where you let someone else control you because you're not taking control of what you are saying to yourself. Anybody can say anything they want to me. Anybody can say anything they want to me. I had, I had a, a partner say to me, what are you going to do if we broke up? Nobody's going to want to be with you because you're a stripper. Because I was at the time. And I said you're wrong. I guarantee if we break up, I will do better than you because that's what I do. I always look at my life. I look at what I've gone through. I take the lesson and I level up. So I guarantee if this relationship ends, my next one will be better. So it doesn't matter what people say to you. What matters is what you say to yourself. So that's what you need to start changing right away. Uh, my boyfriend of a year admitted to setting up tests to see my reaction to certain situations. Is this common? No, it's emotional manipulation and it's not okay. Miss Anali. Would you be willing to do a coaching session right now in the next couple hours? Uh, I do have an opening actually. Okay. Um, I could, I could. Um, so uh, if you wanted to, what you can do is go to my bio, click on the link tree and uh, go and uh, click that coaching button. It takes you to a page. So you can you purchase your session. I'll watch for it. Um, and um, what you can do is when you purchase it, uh, right in the time, Eastern time that you're wanting, your your session to be so if you wanted to do that i do also have spaces tomorrow so you could book yourself in for a session tomorrow as well if you wanted to you know get in as soon as possible thank you for answering my questions i did your no insecurity course and loved it danielle love it good 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 
Any advice for happy couples who want to keep it that way? Make sure you get in two kisses a day, minimum five seconds each. If there's any conflict in your relationship, you can grab fix that shit to remove the last of it. Get it completely conflict free. Okay, I'll do it right now. Good, good, good. Um, also, fix that shit does help you understand, uh, you know, how your partner uh, really is built. Um, I speak man, so I really do understand how men think and operate. So it can give you some insight. Um, I do also give you some communication tools that you might not be using yet that can deepen things even more in your relationship. Do you have the audio only sessions available? I just do video now, my love. Yeah, just, uh, just video sessions now. How do I mentally get over my ex? I try to fight it, but I can't help and think of us being together. Um, so do you have no more assholes? Are you planning your next relationship? Are you visualizing your next person yet? What happens if you're sad and your partner doesn't react? Why do you want your partner to react? Why can't you, why can't you just be in your own emotions without wanting your emotions to infect other people in a negative way? Um, it's okay to go to your partner and say, baby, I had a hard day today. Can you put your arms around me and tell me everything is gonna be okay? It's okay to instruct them how to comfort you, but, but you know, have, like basically testing them, right? Like. I'm sad and I'm not going to tell you, but you're supposed, you're supposed to behave in a certain way. Um, or making them your therapist. I'm sad and you're supposed to lift me through this. I'm, I'm sad and you're supposed to fix this for me. This is you not taking responsibility for your own emotions. You're sad. What are you going to do about it? Here's the thing. My number one relationship rule is it's not fair to ask for anything you're not willing to do first. You're saying, I'm sad. You need to do something about this not fair to ask for anything you're not willing to do first. I'm sad. I need to do something about this. What are you doing about your sadness? How much does money matter in a relationship? It matters a lot. Uh, it matters a lot. If you're, if you're wanting to, to have a stable house, uh, stable housing for yourself and your family and your partner has a gambling addiction money certainly matters uh, if if you're wanting to save money to buy a home and your partner is is financially irresponsible money matters if you're working two jobs and your partner can't be bothered to get off their ass and get one job money matters love all your books thank you when is your book for men coming out the Perfect Play, which is the dating book for men, is out now. Uh, you can get it by going into my bio and clicking the link tree. Hannah, I see you, Hannah. Uh, clicking the link tree and um, clicking that first button. So, amen, sister, just bought it, love it. Uh, so, Hannah, what is she gonna hop on now? I just bought it, okay, Hannah. So did you want to hop on now? Did you want to do that right now? Through richer and poorer. So here's the thing about through richer and poorer. Choose yourself a responsible person. Like I will do richer and poorer with my husband. And do you know why? Because I've watched the man work his ass off. Ass off. He's assless. It's gone. Because he worked it off for the past 20 years. If, if his business falls apart. I'm with him through richer and poorer because he's he's not choosing to be lazy. Um, go get your coaching, Hannah. <laughs> so cute. He's not choosing to be lazy. He tried very hard for this to not happen. That would be great. Could we do five my time, which is in 20 minutes? Yes, my love. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I will see you uh, on uh, our Zoom call. I will see you there in 20 minutes, lovely. Um, so yes, I, I would do richer or poor um, with this man because it's it's not like I picked myself a selfish short-term thinker and then I went, well, rich or poor, right? I'm I'm with him through thick and thin. I I will I will go through the nuclear war with him 
because he deserves it. He has earned that from me because he's shown himself to be conscientious. Um, but don't don't pick somebody who lacks integrity and is not conscientious and they go, mm, rich or poor. Don't put yourself through that. <laughs> Do you believe that emotional closeness can be achieved without physical intimacy in a relationship? Uh, everything is possible, 100%, yes, 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 yes. Some relationships can't even have physical intimacy, right? For maybe somebody had an accident and um, you know now they're quadriplegic. So you can still be very close to that person, very intimate with that person. Love your content. Thank you so much. Thank you, love. Any advice for breaking trauma bonds? Um, you can start with meditation, which reduces stress, fear, and anxiety, which is one of those things that that you know keeps you bonded to that person is is those negative emotions. But I would definitely suggest coaching. Suspect cheating with coworker. Texts are all deleted. What should I do? Get the proof. Get the proof. Can't say anything till you get the proof. Get the proof. I've been in a healthy relationship for 10 months. What to do when she is upset and goes silent? Let her go through her emotions. Let her go through her thoughts. Maintain your own emotional well-being so that when she comes back from going through her thoughts and emotions, there you are patiently waiting for her with all the love in the world. Uh, how do you help a family member see the light that their partner is bad for them? If they're practicing willful ignorance, there literally is nothing you can do about that. You just need to let them come to their own conclusions. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Uh, so, guys, uh, I am going to head out. But before I go, I'm going to throw some freebies your way. And I'm going to give you a last opportunity to set yourself up to get a notification when I go live. Um, so click my picture up here if you want a notification next time I go live. Click it once or twice you're going to get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell click on the bell when you do that say i just did you can also go into my bio and go click on that link tree there's a free book for you fake love me not apply how to avoid posers losers scammers and predators there's also a free guide for long distance relationships that you can print out the meditation resource button also has a free guide to help get you started on meditation uh no him deleting text is not proof you you need to have screenshots you need to have proof something that he can't deny you can say i know you're having an affair because you deleted text and he's like no i didn't and how are you going to prove your point right you need to be able to have proof against the no i didn't and just saying he deleted text proves nothing except that he doesn't want you to see the text that's all it proves that's all it proves is that he didn't want you to see the text but it doesn't prove what's happened uh is your men's edition out yet so yes i do have the version of no more assholes out for men it's called the perfect play um and it is out on amazon now you can get it through the link like you can go on amazon you can go search my name you'll find it um, but if you want an easy way to find it, just go to my bio, click on the link tree. You're going to see the first link there. Uh, being with someone addicted to opioids, don't do it. Don't do it. You're not a therapist. You're not an addictions counselor. Um, and you don't need to suffer through that. They need to go get help and they're not hitting rock bottom as long as you're there supporting them and enabling the behavior. How do you know if you're ready to date again? Uh, you don't need to be ready. You can just use a no kissing for three months dating rule. So no kissing, no sleepovers, no sex for three months. And if you meet somebody, then use that to make sure you don't just fall into a relationship with somebody who's wrong for you. Get no more assholes, read this book. Education is key to making the right choices in everything. 
uh, as well as dating, as well as love. So grab no more assholes. Tell yourself I'm going to use a no kissing for three months dating rule. Read this book. Understand what you should be looking for. And when somebody comes your way, you will be better prepared to assess them properly. My husband's friends are really bad influences. What should I do? As in your husband follows along with their influence. Um, maybe not married somebody who was a child in an adult body. Um, but, you know, failing that, there's nothing you can do, my love. This is, this is your situation. There's nothing you can do. We don't get into relationships to change people and you know we can't. You've told them over and over again, I don't like it when you do these behaviors, but he does them anyways because he's an adult and he's, he's making his choices. Um, you either accept the behaviors that he's doing that you don't like because this was your choice, this was your partner, um, or you can leave the relationship, but uh, you know, you, you can't, you can't change him, right? You can't change him. He's making his own decisions and he always will, uh, always has been, always will. You can set a standard. You can say, I don't want to be in a relationship where X, Y, Z happens, but then you have to stand by your word if he repeats the behavior. I had to deal with the horrible pain of divorce. Yes. I have a book for you. My love is come back queen. This is the book that helps you get through through this 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 moment in time this is the book that helps you put your heart back together my boyfriend has been going out and staying super late and lying to me about who was there uh doesn't sound like the kind of relationship i want to stay in absolutely love your content thank you honey hello Wayfair always wants to tell me about TV stands. I don't know why. Uh, is it okay if I say I notice someone telling me I'm beautiful on a dating app? Uh, honey, you don't want to say that. Uh, you don't want to say that. You want to say thank you. Um, because, uh, you know, like good men are humble people and like attracts like. Um, so you can you know i would i like you can say it in person you can be like i don't know right and then it's cute right because there's inflection there's facial expression but uh when you're just typing that out to somebody it can come across as um uh narcissistic so you do want to be careful of what you say when you're writing versus in front of people because i know in letters is different from I don't know, right? So you can say that if you're saying it in a cute way in person, but then always follow that up with thank you because that's the, the grace, right? So show grace. When somebody compliments you, always show grace. <clears throat> How do I tell him his breath puts me off? Uh, so what you can do is you can say, I don't know if you know this, but you often have bad breath and i, I want to tell you this because you know obviously all right literally say that like that because you know obviously um and say like have you ever had that checked out like like because i know sometimes it can be like a medical condition like like that's uh, honestly like that's something that does need to be looked into and so tell him like that right tell him like this is like a you know between me and you like have you ever right and and just make it something that's not like uh i don't know if you know this but you stink right so so deliver it in a way that's like kind caring and gentle and concerned uh see the just keep offering them gum and look at the memo that's it's it's not being honest enough right you like here, listen, guys, don't be afraid to make suggestions because people who care about you are listening. People who don't have egos that run their lives are not offended by it. I said to my husband, you look 10, like this is when we were just friends. Like this is when he was just coming to see me at the club. Um, but I said, uh, you'd look 10 years younger if you shaved your goatee. He shaved his goatee. I said, have you ever thought about using teeth whiteners? 
he got teeth whiteners. So don't be afraid. Um, I, I said, uh, you have to stop eating garlic. I really, I really don't like the smell of garlic on people. You stopped eating garlic, right? It's okay to say what you like. You want to help these people that you're interested in be more attractive to you. If there's something that's turning you off, it's okay to say so. I don't know what that is. Uh, what do you do if a guy shuts down in the face of confrontation and stops responding? Don't be confrontational. Get fix that shit so that you understand how to um, have really good communication. When you are trying to communicate with somebody, if you are actually trying to communicate, then what you want to avoid is uh, defensiveness, right? So there really does need to be some, uh, some. you need to be conscientious about the way you're communicating. Uh, thoughts on long distance relationship. So for those of you who are in a long distance relationship, I have a free guide for you in the link tree in my bio. So go grab that. It's uh, tips on how to create intimacy, maintain intimacy, overcome conflict. <clears throat> so thoughts on dealing with the ex-wife baby mama as the stepmom. Fantastic. Um, so uh, you, you, first of all, you know, I, I hope you have a good man. That can be difficult though because um, they do treat the uh, baby mama well because they want to co-parent properly. They want to keep the peace. They want to make sure baby mama is happy. That can be very difficult as, you know, the other, basically, like it feels like a third wheel sometimes. Um, but understand that this is for the children. So don't be bothered by what he's doing for the kids, making her happy, making sure she's happy. Uh, making sure the kids are happy, making sure the kids understand that mom and dad are cohesive and parent cohesively uh, as a team. They co-parent. Um, just don't let your ego get in the way. Um, be friendly with her. Be very friendly. Be very civil. Try to be friends with her if possible. If she's jealous, if she's insecure, if she's competing with you, there's nothing you can do about that. Just distance yourself. My husband is always defensive, then you need to do what's in fix that shit. How do you detect a manipulator? Make sure you use a no kissing for three months dating rule. Uh, you know, manipulator is going to try to get you to bend, right? So if he does that, then shut him off. Like, sorry, no, like you're out of the running. Because basically the no kissing for three months dating rule helps you isolate who is disrespectful. In other words, who cares more about themselves than they care about you? That's what a manipulator does. He tries to get you to bend to him so that he gets what he wants when he wants it. So if you're using no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers for three months dating rule, the manipulator is going to out himself by wanting to coerce you to break this rule before three months is up because he wants what he wants when he wants it. Don't make it easy for people to get what they want when they want it and you will weed out the selfish short-term thinkers. I love your content, thank you. Hello. It's so hard to get rid of the ego, but yeah, never let your emotions run your behaviors. Always let your logic run your behaviors. You are playing the long game. When the kids are an adult, there's gonna be less exposure to baby mama. So you're playing a long game with this. We're having communication issues. Nothing ever gets resolved. We just go in circles. I know the cycle. My husband and I fought for 10 years. We have broken the cycle. We are out of that. We haven't had a single fight in four years. This is the book, Fix That Shit, that is gonna help you break this cycle. You can get Fix That Shit in an audio book now, by the way. You gotta get it through the link tree in my bio, but I narrated it in case you like my voice too. But yeah, Fix That Shit is gonna help you break the cycle, but you have to do what's in that book. You're welcome. 
How can I find my purpose in life and work on myself? Fresh out of a relationship. I have a book for you. So, uh, so custom made is the one. This is the book that you are asking for. This book answers two questions. One, what is my purpose? So it's going to help you flesh it out, find it out. Two, uh, how can you monetize it? How can you literally get paid doing what you love? So custom made is the book for you, my love. Uh, I'm a dating and relationship coach. They need to go hand in hand. It's, it's you know, half the job helping you get into a relationship but not helping you understand how to stay in that relationship. I don't want repeat customers. I don't want people to get in a relationship and then come back and go, oh, well, because that didn't work, so I got to get into another one again. Uh, I want to help people get into the right relationship by choosing the right partner and then keep that relationship by being the right partner. Is it bad that my boyfriend would rather hang out with his friends than hang out with me? If he's not balancing, in other words, he spends more time with his friends than he does with you, there's no balance, um, then you are not in a good relationship. You're with somebody who cares to be with you when it's, you know, basically when he can get his but when you're not useful, then he doesn't care to be around you. There's, it's not about companionship, it's about what he's gonna get. So I wouldn't stay in that relationship. Best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. If you don't like what's happening, you not, you're not gonna like what's gonna continue to happen. So say to him, I love you, I'm not telling you what to do, you're free to do what you want, but I need to be in a relationship with somebody who actually wants to spend more time with me. He always used to apologize when he hurt me. Now he never apologizes for anything. Why? I don't know. Um, because I don't know what's happening. I don't know who he is. I, I don't know what the circumstances are that hurt you that he was but is no longer apologizing for. If you want me to properly answer this question, we would need to do a session so that you know I could understand and then help you gain some clarity. If you did want to do that, anybody who wants to gain clarity on what's happening in their particular situation, because when it comes to particulars, I need details, um, right? Here I can answer like, you know, questions that can generally apply, but when it comes to your situation, should you stay, should you go, um, right? Uh, how, how am I supposed to assess what's happening in this relationship? I do need a lot more details. So if you did want to gain some clarity and get some help in your situation, get a coaching session. So go to my bio, click on the link tree, click that coaching button, follow the three steps. If you just book yourself in for a session and you don't pre-purchase your session, I'm just going to delete it because you do need to pre-purchase. The way, the, the, the way that I can come to these sessions with 100% focus on you with no negative vibes whatsoever is because I never have to chase people to pay for their sessions. So if you do want to book yourself in for a session, follow the three steps and then I can help you in your situation. Thoughts on being with someone who definitely doesn't want kids when you aren't sure yet? Well, you're not sure yet, so why don't you clarify that? Um, right, so your questions in order to clarify if you want kids or not. Um, what, or what order does someone read my books? So here's the thing, that's individual. Um, go to my bio, click on the link tree. There's a what book is right for me quiz. Take that quiz because it's gonna list all my books. I wrote. I wrote nine now, but there's eight that are listed in the quiz. Uh, the, the men's one that I just released isn't up there yet. Um, so there's eight books and it's gonna list all of my books in the order that you want to read them in based on how you answer this quiz. It's 20 questions, yes or no. It's really cute and fast. And it, it really gives you your reading list that's like connected to you, which is really cute and fun. Now, uh, going back to the question about having kids, they don't decide anything until you know what you want, right? Like why break off a relationship with somebody who doesn't want kids only for you to ultimately decide you don't want kids. So here's your personal quest for finding out if you want kids or not. Um, first of all, ask yourself, 
do I want to sacrifice the money? Go do your research. Do your research on the cost of having a child and ask yourself, am I willing to sacrifice this finance? Which, you know, the money you spend on a kid is money you don't spend in your savings. It's money you don't put towards your retirement. It's money you don't put towards your housing. It's money you don't put towards your dreams and goals. So be certain that this is a financial sacrifice you're willing to make. Know how much it's going to cost. Do that research. Another thing that you should do is talk to parents. This is what you ask them. I did this for a full year. Every single parent I met, I said, what's the best part? What's the worst part? And I, and I, I listened to what they said. So take that under consideration. Also ask yourself, am I willing to sacrifice the time? Obviously, you can't be hedonistic anymore when you have children. So are you willing to sacrifice the time it takes to devote to them for X number of years? Also ask yourself this, if I have a child that stays in diapers and is in a bed or a wheelchair for the rest of its life, am I willing to be there for them? Is that a sacrifice I'm willing to make? Because that's something that might happen. Don't glorify this and, and you know think it's gonna be the perfect baby and the perfect kid and the perfect teenager and the perfect adult who goes off into the world and, and succeeds, right? There may be something that happens. Either it's born that way or there's an accident at some point in this person's life. And now you are a parent changing diapers forever. So are you willing to do that? Is that in you? These are all questions you need to ask yourself to understand if you are ready to be a parent. Right, exactly. Uh, do you believe ultimatums are ever necessary? A hundred percent. hundred percent. Don't let anybody tell you that the word ultimatum is a bad word. It's, it's a negative connotation to standards. So yes, you must have standards. Yes, you must have boundaries. And if somebody refuses to respect your standards and boundaries, you leave. So an ultimatum is just a fancy word for I'm giving you a choice to respect my standards and boundaries. If you choose not to, this is not the right relationship for me. It's that easy. And don't ever let people say, mm, ultimatums are a bad word. No, it's not. Mm -mm. You know what's bad? Is me letting someone steamroll over me because they've convinced me that ultimatums are bad. No, my love, there are other people out there. And if you don't respect me, I can do better. And I promise you that I will. Uh, what's your educational background? So I study sociology, psychology, anthropology, biology, behaviorism, spirituality, and it all started with philosophy. Two of your books that I bought came in today, the same day I broke up with my man. Oh, oh. Which books did you get? My boyfriend makes me feel bad about asking him for his help, but the minute I have other options, he has no problem. Okay. Amazing answer. Thank you so much for going in depth. Yes, my love. No regrets, that's right. My boyfriend talks to a girl that likes him, but he says he doesn't like her, but it makes me uncomfortable. Um, so she has a crush on him and he's entertaining her. So he has her around as an eco stroke. Ask my boyfriend to respect boundaries and standards. He says, every time I bring it up, it pushes him back to square one. So it sounds like a coaching session, my love. If you would like some help with this, I would suggest you get a coaching session. We broke up, I blocked him, he called me 27 times on someone else's phone. This can be normal, it's not, it's not okay. Um, it's not okay. So uh, if he is harassing you, 
then uh, something that you can do is get two devices, call him on one, record on the other, and if he picks up, tell him. If he doesn't, leave this on his voicemail, but say, you need to leave me alone. If you don't, I will get a restraining order. Um, so because you recorded that, you can use that as evidence that you did you didn't let him know he needed to let you be and not harass you. So anybody wants long distance relationship tips, I do have a guide for you in the link tree in my bio. It's free, you can go ahead and download that. I don't do attachment styles because I think it's completely unnecessary and it's just a method of making you even more mentally ill by giving you a label that feels like a stigma. Uh, can I book through your bio? Yes. So anybody who wants to book a coaching session, um, click that coaching button in the link to my bio. It takes you to a page. Follow the three steps to book yourself in for a session. And you can do that. Make sure you follow all three steps. He hasn't said I love you yet, but it's been five months. Wait at least six. If you love him, go ahead and say so. Uh, if I make more money, should I be spending more money on dates like for treating us to nice dinners? Uh, no, I don't think so. Just because you make more money doesn't mean you need to spend more money. You can save more money. I think that's the better idea. Hello from Iceland. Love it. What's the coaching about? Dating and relationships? I do know when you know you know when you know you know what is love how do you know it's love versus infatuation love is a verb love is a verb oh thank you love is what you do to help the other person be happy I felt like a bit of a psycho with that label, but I felt like I need to have it. No, uh, I honestly, you guys, I want you all to forget about this attachment theory. Um, it's, it's, it's so bad. Oh, Bosque Jerry. Um, all this attachment theory does is it, it makes you feel worse about yourself. So here's, here's attachment theory. First, we need to know what your behaviors are, and then we give you a label and then we'll tell you the behaviors you need to do in order to feel better. I hope they talk about meditation, but unfortunately, um, you know, therapists, psychologists, all these people, if they just want clients like over and over again, they want to keep you coming, you need to stay in a state of anxiety. You can't be healed. You can't be fixed, right? And so they don't actually give you the tools to um, navigate your emotions, to calm your mind and calm your emotions and deal with life. They just want you coming back week after week to talk about the things that bother you. Uh, so uh, anyways, that's my rant about that. But yeah, so the attachment theories, here's your behaviors, here's your label, and, and here's some behaviors. So me, uh, let's talk about your behaviors. Okay, here are the behaviors that are going to help you undo what's going on, that are going to help you feel better, that are going to help you move forward, that are going to heal you. So you literally don't need the label because you can literally actually change your physical body. You can change your brain. You can, like Harvard did a study, they had people do an MRI scan, go home, meditate for eight weeks, come back, do another MRI scan. The brain changed shape in two places after eight weeks of meditation. The hippocampus, which is introspection and compassion, increased in gray matter. The amygdala, which is um, stress, fear, and anxiety, shrank in size. So why give you a label when you can change your brain? Changing your brain changes the human being that you are. You can change your DNA. People who were uh, depressed and then not depressed had a change in their DNA. People who were not depressed and then became depressed had a change in their DNA. You are changeable. There's no point giving you a label. It's unnecessary. All we need to do is give you the tools to navigate out of these behaviors that are getting in your way. Uh, 
uh, do I believe in narcissism? So yeah, but it's, it's a mental disorder that very few people actually suffer from. We're mislabeling dysfunctional people as narcissistic. Someone to run around with a good relationship goal? Sure. I love Chantal's lives, common understanding vibes. Thank you. Why do people change moods? Could be hormones, could be food, could be lack of sleep. A lot of reasons. He cheated and gaslit on me after one and a half months. He came back and want a relationship with me. What do I do? Say no. What? Do you want that again? Is that, you know, so he wants a relationship. So what do you want? Is that what you want? If, if that's what you want, go back with it because it wants you back. But if you don't want that, then don't take that back. <clears throat> Can you go back to being friends after you've already crossed the line romantically? Everything is possible. What are common traits of men who grew up with an abusive or absent father? Um, not knowing conflict resolution, right? Having no understanding of what proper conflict resolution tools are. School is so crazy. No labels, that's right, no labels. When they claim to change but actions don't prove it, is this manipulation or idealism? right? It could be manipulation. It could be, you know, I, they're speaking their idea, like ideally that's who and how they want to be. Um, I've seen a lot of people, uh, you know, speak of their ideal of themselves, who they want to be. They want to be such great people, but then they just fail to measure up because they just don't follow through. Um, so, you know, if it could be, right, they could be manipulative or they could just be idealistic, but emotionally lazy. So uh, people who are having trouble with meditation want to start meditating. I do have a meditation resource button in the link tree in my bio to help get you started. Uh, may I ask what behaviors get in your way? In my way, what behaviors get in my way? Uh, I, I would say I don't exercise enough. Uh, those are the behaviors I get in my way is, is not making enough time in the day to exercise more, which in the long run is not good because, you know, the aging body and you got to keep moving to keep your, your body strong and I'm not moving enough and I'm aware of that. I feel so depressed if I don't get enough attention from my fiance. So this is codependency, my love. Um, and that doesn't need to change, but I don't have a magic wand for that. I do help people through that in coaching. If you did want to change that, I would suggest uh, getting some coaching sessions to, you know, empower yourself because this is disempowered. My well-being lies in someone else's hands. My well-being lies in someone else's behavior instead of I am in control of my mental well-being. So if that is something you want to work on, do come get a coaching session. Signs of underlying anger issues if they have a short fuse. Should you stay with someone with insecurities? Not if they're not managing their insecurities, right? Like people can have, listen, insecurity is woven into us. It is a human function. It's what maintains hierarchy in society. Hierarchy is necessary for us being able to work together as a group. We are that's that's our, our function is is a hierarchy right we don't we don't have equality there's always a hierarchy and um this is one of the things that maintains our survival um so insecurity is normal it's, it's created into us by mother nature because that's just how we function together right but how do we manage our insecurity do we take responsibility for it or do we vomit it onto other people 
Anybody who takes responsibility and doesn't vomit their insecurity is someone you can stay with. But if they vomit their insecurity on you, you need to have a boundary. You need to say, I will not be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't manage their thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. If you don't do that, if you vomit on me because you had a thought that created an emotion and then you, vomit that, you vomited that on me, I will not stay for this. So either you get the help you need to manage yourself or I will not stay in this relationship. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. Is friends with benefits ever a good idea? I don't want a relationship right now, but worried I could catch feelings. So that's just it. Um, that is, that's the problem. Uh, I, I've had friends with benefits and not caught feelings, but if you're worried that you're going to catch feelings, then don't do it. Uh, so for those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here once or twice, you're going to get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on that bell. When you do that, say, I just did. Why do you advocate for couples to cheat on each other? What, who is this? Who is this? Front, come live with me. Let's talk about that. Why do you think I say that? Come tell me this live. Come say this. Front, I got my live thing turned on. Come join me live. Come join me live. Just did, awesome, awesome. My Landis' boyfriend lost his temper today because I almost got in an accident and wants to hurt, he wants to hurt the person driving. Okay, just did, hello my loves, welcome. Welcome. Front, waiting for you. If you don't have the courage to show up, just gonna have to block you and cause it looks like you're just a troll. So let's see what you are. Are you somebody who can have an intelligent conversation or are you just trolling? How do you confront a partner with comment issue? Do you mean like they comment on other people's uh, posts? You say, uh, you say, I'm not telling you what to do. You're free to do what you want, but I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who seeks the attention of other people. Oh, my moderator job went away. Brooke, let's fix that. Let's fix that. There you go, Brooke. I don't have any books on Audible, but uh, Fix That Shit is now an audio book. You can get it through the link tree in my bio. Uh, oh, how do you deal with a partner with commitment issues? You don't, you don't. I Listen, I'm looking for a relationship. I'm not looking for a baby. I'm not looking to be a therapist. If you're not ready for a relationship, you're not ready for me because I'm ready for a relationship. So if you're not ready for a relationship, I'm taking you out of the running. You are not on my radar. The only people I'm considering are the people who are on the same page as me, who want a relationship, share the same goals that I do, the same fundamental values. I wanna get married, I wanna buy a house, I wanna do some traveling, I wanna have a baby or two or four. If you are not aligned with that, you're not on my radar. So that's the kind of attitude you need to have when somebody says, I have commitment issues. Okay, good to know. Thank you for your honesty. Let me shift you over here so that this space is clear for people who are ready for a relationship. And I will choose the best one for me out of that group. You guys are amazing. Thank you for being so helpful. Karina followed the host. Thank you. 
My boyfriend doesn't want to spend time and give me as much time as he used to. I don't know what happened. You have evolved from the courtship phase to the reality phase. I don't know how much time you're talking about, but understand that the courtship phase is very... <laughs> I, I, obviously, a friend doesn't actually have any courage, so I just went ahead and blocked him. Um, so the courtship phase is highly inefficient. We we sleep less, but we're not tired. We, we don't want to spend time with friends or hobbies or ourselves. We want to spend time with this person. There's a certain infatuation that takes place during the courtship phase because Mother Nature enhances all your natural happy chemicals, making you want to spend a lot more time together. This is the bonding process. But when the courtship phase fades, which it does at about three months, your chemicals die down because your body readjusts, then now you get into the reality phase. Reality is I do want to work that over time because I do want to save that money because I have goals like buying a house. I do want to see my friends. I haven't seen them in a while and they are part of a balanced life. I do want to have time to myself. I want my me time because it helps me unwind and get back in touch with myself and my own thoughts and my own feelings. I do want to get back to my hobbies. These are things that make me feel more alive. These are my talents. I enjoy them. So there will be less time together because reality means you're not the only person in their life. So this is why I wrote after the first kiss which is the book that follows No More Assholes. So No More Assholes means you find that ideal partner after the first kiss means you transition from courtship to reality phase without going through this insecurity phase because you understand that there is a shift in evolution at different stages of your relationship. Tips to prevent feelings, uh, to prevent getting feelings for friends with benefit. Don't have intercourse. Like, do everything but um, in it. You know what I mean? Um, so here's the thing. When there's movement in the birth canal, your body produces a lot more oxytocin. Oxytocin is the chemical that makes you feel warm and fuzzy. But you're kissing. And so you're creating that kiss chemical that makes you think you've gone through a bedding process. If there is one iota of your brain that is in mate seeking mode, like I've done friends with benefits, I've done that kind of stuff because I didn't want a relationship, not one bit, not at all, not at all. So it was easy for me to, to just kiss and make out and do sexy things with people because I, I didn't want any of it. If there's any part of your brain that wants a relationship, you will fall for the person you're kissing and being intimate with because your brain is gonna think you've chosen somebody because you are in mate-seeking mode. Thank you so much. I love watching your lives whenever they come on. Thank you, love. Lots of conversations going on. Chelsea, thank you. Love this, yay. That was cute. Why are guys so pushy? Guys, right? I'm glad you said guys and not men because men are not pushy. Why are guys so pushy? Because the horny. Mother Nature made them eager. They have a 24-7 fertility cycle. So, um, so yeah, they're like, uh, uh, where am I going to get it? Where am I, you, 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 you. They want to wear you down. Don't let them wear you down. You're outstanding. Why, oh, thank you. Dimly, what is the easiest way to figure out if the cool guy from Tinder is not married? Um, using no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers for three months dating rule. 
That's the only way you'll find out. If you don't go to his home, if you don't meet his people, don't kiss him. Don't kiss him. Uh, how to help my friend who always dates toxic men because she wants a mate so bad, get her no more assholes. Knowledge is power. Why do they lose interest? Because they were selfish, short-term thinkers. So you do want to get no more assholes um, and start detaching from selfish, short-term thinkers. Why do you, where, what do you recommend when you get gaslit and stonewalling exists? Uh, so if you're in a relationship with a selfish, short-term thinker, dump him. Get in a relationship with a generous, long-term thinker. If you're in a relationship with a generous, long-term thinker, remove the conflict from your relationship. You can do that with coaching or with fix that shit. 34 and three kids later, starting the no kissing rule. No more time to waste, my love. No more time to waste. I'm gonna give that a shot, really. I love it, love it. If his mom causes problems, but he defends you, should you continue being in his life? Why? right um so he he defends you but there's no boundaries so she continues to cause problems so he's really not stopping his mom from causing problems so she will continuously cause problems so do you want to best predict her future behaviors past behavior this is what i want you to ask yourself everything i've experienced so far do i want more because that's the pattern so if you don't want more this is not the relationship for you because this will continue. How do I let a guy know I'm interested in him? Ask him out. Boyfriend doesn't trust my friends, but his are way worse. He doesn't want me hanging out with them. Uh, dump him. Dump the motherfucker. Dump the motherfucker. He's trying to isolate you. And we are a product of the people we hang around with and he's trying to isolate you. So I'm his, his friends are way worse. So what kind of person is he? His friends are way worse and he doesn't want you to see your friends. So this sounds shady on top of shady. I wonder how he would pass the 12 character traits and no more assholes. So... Uh-huh. Sorry guys, I just need to send an email. Just need to send an email. Best way to get over a selfish person? Oh, it's easy. Easy, get yourself no more assholes, start planning your next relationship, move forward, start looking forward, stop looking backward, uh, right? I don't wanna be in a relationship with somebody who is selfish. Advice for dating in your 50s, get no more assholes, use that no kissing for three months dating rule. There is no more time to waste. No time to waste. Uh, how long should I wait till I start a new relationship? You don't need to wait. You do not need to wait. You do not need to put yourself in limbo for any reason whatsoever. 
What you do need to do is use a no kissing for three months dating rule. No kissing, no sex, no sleepovers for three months. This is gonna keep you from falling into a relationship with somebody who's not right for you. It's not about how long you wait, it's how you date. So get no more assholes, read this book, do what's in this book. This is a manual on getting into the right relationship. Being the type of person who attracts the right person teaching you like exactly what to look for in a partner so if you're not using this book to find your next partner if you're not using a no kissing for three months dating rule it doesn't matter how long you wait you will not use a method that weeds out selfish short-term thinkers you will not know what to look for in a partner there are 12 character traits you need to look for in somebody do you know what they are I need to start working on me. I feel sad. I've been married. I feel like I need my husband beside me. Uh, come get coaching, my love, so we can help you. I don't have a magic wand that's going to help you with that. Um, but if you can come and get coaching sessions, I can understand where this is coming from and give you the tools to move past it. You can work on yourself at any point in life. You don't have to be single to work on yourself. And by the way, No More Assholes teaches you how to work on yourself. Elevate your self-esteem, elevate your confidence, calm your mind, be in control of your emotions. Those are, is that what you want to work on? That's what I teach you how to do in No More Assholes. Also, if you're in a relationship and want to work on yourself, fix that shit is the one to read. Uh, I do have sessions open for Monday. So for those of you who want a coaching session to gain some clarity, get a plan, understand how to navigate what it is that you're experiencing, go to my bio, click on the link tree. You're going to see there's a coaching button. It's the second button on there. It takes you to a page. Make sure you read the instructions there. Follow the instructions, instructions to book yourself in for a session. I depend on my boyfriend too much. Any book recommendation or advice? Yes, the book recommendation is Fix That Shit. If you want this in audiobook form, you will find that in the link to my bio. It's not on Audible. Thoughts on first love being the deepest? Oh no. Mm -mm. Uh, no, my, my last love is the deepest one. My husband is the bestest, most amazing person. Uh, this definitely is is the deepest love I've ever had because this man has loved me better than anyone ever has um, He's treated me better than anyone ever has. He's been more loyal to me than anyone ever has He's been more generous with me than anyone ever has so uh, It's the you know, the first love is the most interesting sometimes sometimes I don't, I, I take it back. I'm <laughs> honestly, like I think about the first person I fell in love with and no, he's not as interesting as my current husband. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you're a man and you want a book that's going to help you get into the right relationship, The Perfect Play is now out. It's on Amazon. Go to my bio, click on the link tree. The first button is going to bring you right to the page on Amazon to go get it. So happy. So happy. Um, how to set boundaries calmly and firmly. Uh, the book for men is called The Perfect Play. What if you're already in the right relationship and want to perfect? Get fix that shit. Get fix that shit and fix that shit. Make it perfect. Nothing's stopping you. 
he makes time for everyone but me how do you ask for more equal effort so uh, for 30 days um, track how he spends his time and go to him as a board meeting present this as a board meeting hey baby I've noticed in the last month this is how much time you spend with your friends this is how much time you spend with me in hours like don't make this something that you know I feel like right I feel like uh, -uh. make it real make it tangible track how he spends his time for 30 days and go to him with the results this is the reality of how you have spent your time for the past 30 days i would like to spend more time with you if this isn't something you want to do i feel like this relationship isn't for me because i want to be in a relationship with somebody who wants to spend more time with me I'm 21, never dated, seen lots of toxic relationships. How do I start? No more assholes. Start with reading No More Assholes. Knowledge is power. When you understand how to get into the right relationship and who you should be looking for, you can avoid all the problems that people who don't have knowledge and education and insight are suffering through. It was my 10 year anniversary, but my husband never makes me feel special on special dates. Is he a, um, an efficient giver? Like, is he generous, but efficient with his generosity? So, you know, uh, making sure, like, you know, men, it's the car thing, right? So, <coughs> you know, my husband is generous with me, which means I always have a good car to drive. Uh, he main, he makes sure the car is maintained for me, right? If the car needs a repair, he's going to pay for that. Um, so that's, I, I could pay for my own car, but my husband is generous. So this is something he does for me. He does this because I'm a special person in his life. This isn't something he does for just anybody. Uh, I'm a special person. So I, I get this part of his generosity. So is he efficient with his giving or does he simply not give at all? Is he, is he just not generous at all? And you're hoping for makeup days. You're hoping, you know, seeing as he's just, he's not, he's not thoughtful or generous at all. Um, if, if he were to show me some kindness and generosity on these days, at least I could feel good about our relationship. Do you think people want to book walkthrough? Maybe. Look at the cowards. What does say yes about? Say yes to goodness. Um, so most of my books are about how to relationship properly. Say yes to goodness is how to live properly. So this talks about 10 areas of your life that affect you and how you can navigate them. Do people want a book walkthrough? Would anybody like a book walkthrough? I have eight of my books. One, two, three, four. What? Do I have two? One, two, three, four. Oh, oh, fix that shit. It was doubled up. Doubled up. So here we go. Eight bucks. Who wants a book walk through? We got a couple of yeses. How long after the breakup before you start dating? There's no time frame. Just use a no kissing for three months dating rule and read no more assholes. That's, that's, that's the, see, how long should you wait after a breakup to start dating is the wrong question. Life begins when you ask the right question. The right question is, how can I make sure my next relationship is better than the one I left behind? Not how long should I wait before I start dating? How do I make sure I don't go through this again? How do I make sure the next one is the one I wanna stay in? How do I make sure the next one is healthy and functional and loving and intimate and a partnership and we make each other laugh and we don't fight. 
So it's not how long you wait, it's how you date. So get no more assholes, read and do what's in this book and use the no kissing for three months dating rule. Okay, my loves, we want the book walk through. So we start with the breakup, come back queen. Uh, if you need to put your heart back together again, if you're still pining over your last relationship, if you're still hurt and injured, this is the book you want to get into. It's going to help you heal your heart. Then you're going to get into No More Assholes. This is one that's going to help you make sure you choose the right partner. Um, don't be stuck with a selfish short-term thinker ever again. Get in a, gen in a relationship with a generous long-term thinker. Uh, from there, you're going to go to After the First Kiss. This is a book that helps you transition from courtship phase to reality phase without going into an insecurity phase. A lot of things you need to understand in this transition. Uh, then you are going to get into Fix That Shit. This is a book that helps you unpack the baggage you are bringing with you. Uh, the Your parent baggage, your past relationship baggage. Uh, your inner dialogue baggage, your insecurity baggage. This is going to help you manage your emotions, not vomit into your relationship and cause fights. It's also going to help you navigate his baggage that he vomits into the relationship without it causing fights. I'm going to give you conflict resolution tools so that you can talk about whatever you need to talk about without it causing fights. This is the book that gets you to zero fights if you follow what's in this book and you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you. Now, custom made goes really well with fix that shit. If you are codependent, if you're making your partner your purpose, if you're depressed, if they don't spend every minute of their spare time with you, you need to find your purpose. You need to stop making your partner your purpose. Uh, you need to um, make your purpose the icing on your cake and make, or your cake, I mean, your purpose is your cake. Your partner is the icing on your cake. Uh, dating 101, parents, get this for your teenagers so that they don't need no more assholes and fix that shit one day because they don't make the same mistakes we did. Uh, there's no swearing in that book, by the way, just so you know. Fake Love Me Not Apply, this is a free book. You will get that if you hit that free book button in the link tree in my bio. This is how to avoid posers, losers, scammers, and predators. And say yes to goodness, we just talked about this. Um, this is how to navigate your life, 10 areas of your life that affect you and how to effectively navigate it so that uh, you are happy. The word from Big Bang Theory, symbiosis. That is our goal, is to live in harmony with our environment. I do have a What Book Is Right For Me quiz in the link tree in my bio. You can get all my books on Amazon or anywhere you buy books online. Um, and if you want an audiobook, Fix That Shit is an audiobook, but you can only get it through the link tree in my bio. Do you think men put women into two categories, fun or wife? Yeah, they do. Of course they do. That's why, you know, you'll you'll have a friends with benefits and you'll want a relationship. They're like, no, 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 I don't want a relationship. You're in the fun category. You're not in the wife category. I love free stuff. How do I forgive after they've cheated on me? Why? Like, get a coaching session, love. This is, I don't have an easy answer for you on that one. I do not have an easy answer for you on that one. Come get a coaching session uh, if you want to figure out how to work through this. Ah, it seemed like you wrote some good books. We'll read all of them. Thank you. What times are you usually on TikTok Live? So usually later at night, uh, usually after 10.30. Um, usually after 10.30. Um, sometimes in the afternoon though too. Can one coaching session be effective for couples? It depends, right? It depends. I can't guarantee that it will be 
uh, 100% effective for you. I don't know what your situation is. I also don't know how willing you are to follow instruction. When I do a coaching session, I always give homework. If you don't do your homework, then uh, obviously you don't get the, in the result that the homework would give you. Boyfriend tagging other girls who I don't know in funny memes. Uh, I wish she tagged me instead. Is this my ego? Um, so definitely ego, but could also very well be a red flag. Um, but I, you know, I don't know, right? I don't know unless like if you got a coaching session, I could do a deeper dive into your relationship, do an assessment, see if you're with a selfish short term thinker. Are these ego strokes, right? A lot of questions. My boyfriend of five years is so focused on his business, we barely make time. That is the, you know, the sacrifice you make if you get into a relationship with an ambitious, hardworking person, is you do need to sacrifice one marshmallow today for two marshmallows tomorrow. They will put every ounce of their energy into their business and have little left over because a business is a, it's a momentum thing, right? You have to keep building, building, building. So you do have to keep giving it all this time, but the end goal is to be able to slow down one day to have enough capital to feel comfortable slowing down. And that's probably what he's trying to do is make sure that by the time his body slows down because of age, he can go, you know what, it's okay, I can sit back because I'm not surviving, I'm thriving. And I'm thriving because I've, I've put in all this work. So if you don't want to be with an ambitious, hardworking person, don't be with them because it's not okay to get into someone's life and go, oh, okay, so now that I'm here, you need to change, you need to modify, you need to reduce your goals. That's not okay. Um, I, I wouldn't be okay with, like if you said to me, I just, I started dating somebody and he says I need to work less, I'd be like, dump the motherfucker. Do you be as ambitious as you wanna be and get in a relationship with somebody who supports you for who you are. I don't understand this. You can't help her figure out how to forgive after he cheats on a live. She's not the only one. I literally don't understand that statement. Boyfriend of two years hasn't gotten me an actual gift. Is this weird? Even if his love language isn't gifts, his love language is not gifts. It's not weird at all, um, right? It's not weird at all. But is he generous in other ways? Because if he's generous in other ways, he's telling himself he is giving you gifts. And you should tell yourself he is giving you gifts if he is generous in other ways don't over like here's the thing we are surrounded by a a culture that says buy 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 right and so you say hey if somebody buys things for me like the things that i see on tv the things that i see in in commercials um you know if he if he subscribes to that then that means i'm special if he's buying you things otherwise he's buying you meals those are gifts that's money right? A purchase is money. Money takes time to get. You, you have to invest your time in somewhere to make money, right? Um, and so it took time to make the money. Uh, and when he spends that money, he needs to take the time to make that money again. So when he's spending money on you, he is gifting you his time, his effort, his finances. He may not do it on certain calendar days because there's a cultural thing that's been woven into us that says, hey, you're special if somebody does something for you on these days. Some people don't subscribe to that. In fact, they resent that. They say to themselves, I don't want to buy things on these days because I'm supposed to. I want to do things on these days because I want to show you that I care. So if he is being generous with you on other days, give him credit for that and apply that credit towards those calendar days.
Okay, we both have successful businesses, but the hard part lately has been the lack of effort and time. So I would suggest a coaching session um, if you want me to do a deep dive into this and understand it well enough to be able to um, help you figure out what to do in this situation. We broke up, but he's now trying to do the things he wasn't doing because he says he cares still. Sure. Um, how long is that gonna last for? How long is that gonna last for? So, oh, great. Now you feel motivated to put in effort. If we get back together, where's that motivation going to go? So use a no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers for three months rule and see if the effort is consistent. If it's not, don't get back with him. but don't get back with him just because he's trying. Trying is not change. Get back with him because the change is evident. day if you have serious body image issues you need to accept yourself my love otherwise you're going to vomit insecurity into anybody you try to get with so uh, i would suggest coaching to change the dialogue in your mind because that's the first thing that needs to change is what you are saying to yourself about yourself If someone has a lot of money and they spend it on you, should it make you feel special? Not necessarily, right? Just because they have money to spend doesn't mean they care. Doesn't mean they care. Just means they have money to spend. It needs to be more than that, right? I, I, I didn't get in the relationship I'm in because he spent money. I, I, I could have been with people who are way richer than my husband. Um, I, I got in this relationship with him because of who he is, his character, his personality, his ethic, his integrity, his affection. What if you're the one that messed things up in the relationship? That can always change. I would suggest coaching so that I can understand what it is that you messed up and help you figure out how to fix it with yourself and how to mend it with the other person. Guys, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, by the way, because I do a coaching giveaway every month. Um, I'm going to head out. I'm going to give you guys one more chance to set yourself up to get a notification when I go live. Uh, so click my picture here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up, and the pop-up is a bell. When you click on that bell, see, I just did. I also have freebies for you in the link tree in my bio. There's a free book. Hit that free book button. Um, there is a free long distance guide. There's also a free guide for meditation in the meditation resource button. So check those out. Uh, also my new book for men, my dating book for men called the perfect play is now available. You can access that through the first button in the link tree in my bio is going to take you right there. Uh, if you guys want to grab my books, you can get them on Amazon or anywhere you buy books online. If you want an audiobook, fix that shit as an audiobook, but you can only get it through the link tree in my bio. I just did. Hello, Michelle. A multimillionaire asked me out. I said no. I was crushing on my now husband, right? Love trumps all. When Listen, it's, you just you need love and a responsible, dedicated, hardworking man, and you have everything absolutely everything okay my loves i gotta go gotta go 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 do a coaching session soon Mwah. i love you i will talk to you soon Bye.